Okay, here's a problem solving video for problem 5.58. And this time it says find I0 using Norton's theorem. And again, we're going to be using the problem solving strategy on pages 185 and 186. Uh, except now we'll be calculating a Norton equivalent circuit. which will have I short circuit, R thevenin, and what we'll have is we'll have a 6 kilo ohm resistor connected here, and there's the current I0. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this as our load, just like it says in the problem solving strategy, and remove that load from the circuit, and this time we're going to find I short circuit, V open circuit, uh, we could calculate V open circuit, but let's calculate I short circuit and R thevenin. And what we're going to do first is, since we have only independent sources, we'll use the procedure outlined in step 2A of the problem solving strategy. It says make those independent sources zero and find R thevenin using resistor combination. So that would say replace this voltage source by a short, this voltage source by a short, this voltage source by a short, this current source by an open, the resulting network is as follows. So now we've replaced all those sources. There's our uh, resulting network. And now let's just do some resistor combinations. So for instance, if we look, those three are in series. So we could redraw this circuit as shown. So now we have a 9 kilo ohm, 3 kilo ohms, 6 kilo ohms. There's A and B. Here's R thevenin. And if we really look at this circuit, if we look at the connection between the 9 and the 6, they're in parallel. So we really could redraw this circuit as follows. So once we redraw the circuit where the 6 kilo ohm and the 9 kilo ohm are in parallel, there's our resulting circuit. And now, uh, if we combine those two in parallel, okay, 6K times 9K over 6K plus 9K, this becomes 3.6 kilo ohms. So then our circuit would reduce to the following. So then R thevenin is 3K plus 3.6K or 6.6 .6 kilo ohm. Okay, so there's one half of our process. Now we need I short circuit. So let's calculate I short circuit. So if we go back to our original circuit with the 6 kilo ohm resistor removed, the terminals labeled A and B, you can see um, I short circuit uh, labeled and now we're going to have to apply circuit analysis techniques to find that. Um, if you go through and look at nodal and mesh, uh, in this case it's probably going to be easier to do mesh. We can define three mesh currents as shown. And we write those equations. And if we notice from the circuit here, I short circuit is going to be I3 minus I2. So now we have three mesh currents. We need to write uh, three equations. The first one is we have a constraint equation. Thank you. 
that's associated with that current source. And if we look, our constraint equation is I2 minus I1 is equal to 2 milliamps. Okay. Now, we still need two equations. This mesh doesn't have any current sources in it, so if we apply KVL, around here we'd have 3K times I3 minus I1 plus 6K times I3 is equal to 8. So that'll give us minus 3K I1 plus 9K I3 equal to 8. So here's one equation. Here's another equation. Now we still need one more equation because we have three unknowns and we can do uh, this outside loop to get that third equation. So if we do that, we'll have 2K times I1 plus 3K times I1 plus 4K times I2 minus 12 plus 6K I3 minus 10 equal to zero. And we get 5K I1 plus 4K I2 plus 6K I3 equal to 22. So here's our third equation. So now we got 1, 2, 3. Now we can solve those using MATLAB. So if we go to MATLAB to solve the equations. So solving using MATLAB, then I1 turns out to be 0.788 milliamps. I2 is 2.788 milliamps. And then I3 is 1.152 milliamps. And if you remember back uh, from our analysis, we said that I short circuit is equal to I3 minus I2. So we have 1.152 minus 2.788 minus 1.636 milliamps. So now we have I short circuit in R7. So now if we draw our Norton equivalent, Here's our Norton equivalent, minus 1.636 milliamps, 6.6 kiloohms. Now here are our terminals A and B. We reconnect our 6 kiloohm resistor, and there's our current I0. Okay, so there's our current I0. Now we can calculate I0 using current division. We have minus 1.636 milliamps. We want the current through the 6, so we put the 6.6K in the numerator. And then I0 is minus 0.857 milliamps, which says the current's actually flowing in the opposite direction we defined.